Welcome, investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. So when I drove by the store, I saw a car, and it ended up being a green, I think it was a Ford, ended up being a green Ford that was parked in the back of the store. So I remember when I drove by, I was like, there's not supposed to be a car there. Like, why is there a car? And then specifically behind a shopping plaza, like nobody goes back there unless it's like delivery trucks. And then again, at midnight, like that's unheard of. So I drove up the road a little bit and I said, well, they just saw my fully marked truck. Like they just saw me drive by, they'll pull off. So I turn around in the middle of the road up the street and I just sit there for like a couple of seconds, not long at all, just thinking, oh, they'll pull out now. They just saw the police come by. Come by. They didn't move. So I was like, hmm. So I drove back in front of the store and then I just slowly kind of crept up to where like it was catty corner. So you couldn't see where I was on the side, but their car was like here. So I'm coming here, their car's here. So it's kind of like blocked. So I'm thinking to myself, like, Maybe they'll see me now and they'll just pull off. They still don't. So I'm just like, whatever, let me just check and see what this car has going on. So I called into our dispatcher and said, hey, I'll just get out with a suspicious car real quick. I'm behind the food line in Goose Creek. Um, so when I pulled in, I couldn't pull directly behind the car because of the way the store kind of protruded out. So I was perpendicular with the car. So I get out. And I'm giving them the car description where I am. And I'm in the middle of about to give them the tag. So when I walk up to the car, I realize, oh, it's a dealer tag. So, of course, no plates on it. So I said, well, it's a dealer tag. Like, let me tell y'all who's in the car. Just give me a few minutes. Cool. Nothing out of the ordinary. This is like something typical that I would have done on every night shift when there's a suspicious car somewhere. So I remember I walk up to the driver's side of the car. There's a female driver in the front seat. And then there's a male passenger, but he's in the back seat on the passenger side, like closer to my truck. So they're sitting perpendicular from each other. Only two people in the car. So immediately that's like a weird seating arrangement. So my first question to her was, why are you sitting back here? And she turned like the ignition a little bit and was like, oh, the battery's dead. But I was like, she had like the floor lights. And I was like, those only come on if the engine is kind of like in the idle position. And she was like... No, 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 no. And I'm just like, that don't even sound right. But okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you about dead battery. So I said, well, why is he sitting in the back seat? And she was like, oh, well, I was trying to give him a ride home because he was working at the mall in North Charleston. Now, the mall in North Charleston from where we are is literally probably like a 15 minute ride. If that, that time of morning, he probably could have made it in 10. So I said, okay, where does he live? And she pointed across the street. So I'm like, well, if he lives across the street, why are y'all parked back here? And then mind you, our mall at the time closed at 10. It's 12. So what y'all been doing for two hours? And she was like, oh, well, he had to fold up clothes. I'm still in my brain going, I used to work in retail. It don't take you two hours to refold clothes, whatever. Not going to argue with you. So I said, how about y'all give me y'all's ID real quick? So she pulled out her ID, handed it to me. He said, oh, I don't have my ID on me. So I took her ID and I put it in my front of my um, uniform, like up under my pen. So you know how you can see her here and hold it. We all do it. But he was in the back seat fidgeting around too much. Like he wouldn't sit still. So I said, um, how about you step out the car real quick, guy? So he's still on that passenger side. So he's closest to my truck. So I walked back around um, to my truck, to the side of my truck where he's getting out of the car. So he gets out. And the only thing he has on is a wife beater, like tank top, kind of like what I have on, and like some basketball shorts and some slides. Typical gear. Like I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'm looking at him and I can tell like he has literally nothing on him. So I leave the back door open because I can still see her. So I'm like, you mind if I pat you down real quick? And he's like, no, ma'am. He immediately throws his hands up. I go to pat him down and there's literally nothing on him. No ID, just basketball shorts and a t-shirt. And I said, you didn't go to work like this. Like, just be for real. Like, how long y'all been back here? And he was like, I just met her a couple of weeks ago, I think is what he said. I said, all right. I said, is this prostitution? What are y'all doing back here? And he kind of got quiet. And I was like, all right, bro. I said, if that's it, if everybody checks out, we're good. I'll let y'all go on about y'all days because I'm still trying to go home early too. 
So I asked him, I said, well, I'm going to go talk to her to make sure her story is the same. Do you mind sitting in my car? He goes, no. So I put him in the back seat of my car in the cage. Doors locked. He's out of the picture. Don't have to worry about him anymore. So they asked, the dispatcher asked, like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I'll just check this girl's ID real quick and I'll be on my way. So I walked back to the car where she is. When I walked back up on the passenger side, I never went back around to the driver's side because the door's open. There's no point in doing that. So I remember smelling like something like really fruity. And I was like, what did you just spray? And she was like, nothing. I said, well, you sprayed something because your car didn't smell like perfume before I walked up here the first time. But now it smells like perfume. And she was like, oh, well, I sprayed this. I just like how it smells. And I'm like, who just randomly does that? So I'm thinking drugs at that point. because she's like, she probably thinks I smell something. So I was like, can you just step out the car for me real quick? And she does. So as soon as she gets out the car, I realize that the front of her pants are unzipped. And she keeps tugging down on the front of her shirt, trying to pull her shirt down. So I'm like, hey, like, don't go reaching around. Like, why are your pants unbuttoned? And she's like, oh, I just like to sit like this. So I'm like, well, put your hands on the front of my car real quick. So now we're standing in the front of, I'm sorry, in front of her car. So we're standing in front of her car. And I said, hey, put your just hands on the hood for me real quick. I'm just going to make sure you don't have any weapons. She's still tugging on her shirt. So I'm like, if you're back here and y'all are doing something like sexual, just say that. Like this, it's not that big of a deal. Like I'll cut you a ticket and let y'all go home. So she's like, no, 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 it's not like that. I was giving him a ride home, still tugging on her shirt. So now I grab her hand. I said, hey, I've already asked you twice to start reaching around. So that's when I asked our dispatcher, hey, can y'all send um, another unit? So the zone that I was working in, I had a partner that worked beside me. He was probably maybe like two miles up the road on a traffic stop. And he was training a guy that, um, previous experience guy, but he was coming from another department. And they were like, yeah, he was like, I'm just up the street. I'll be on the way in just a second. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Like, I'm just, I just want somebody else here with me because now she's not following directions type thing. So then she starts reaching around again. I slam her hand on the hood. And I was like, look, stop moving. Stop reaching around. Like, I'm about to pat you down, make sure you don't have any weapons. Well, then she locks her arm. So that's when I get on the radio and I was like, all right, we're about to fight. So 10-10 for us is a fight in progress. So I just say that really quick on the radio. So as I try to like put, so she's in front of me, I got her hands, like trying to put her hands behind her back. So I'm directly behind her. So I had my lapel mic. So when I turned my head to like key up to tell them that I was fighting a girl, she was already turning. So I thought when she was turning with like her left, that she was just going to try to like right hand or left hand me, give me like a, a little hook or whatever. So to my surprise, it was not a, um, her trying to fight me. That was when the first shot went off. So I remember like turning my head and then I heard something like really, really loud. And then everything just went silent. So I was like, what in the world was that? And I remember seeing something like really, really bright flash, kind of like to the point where it made me blind almost. And the thing I could only see was like little particles in the air. Um, for anybody that's ever been involved in a shooting, the first thing that goes is your hearing. And then the second thing is like time slows down. So I just remember like seeing little particles in the air. Like I can never see particles at any other part of my life. Like, why am I seeing that now? So I'm standing there kind of like <laughs> in a daze almost like, what did I just see? And what just happened? And what was that loud bang? So I was like, okay, like you got to figure it out. So like take a deep breath in. So that's what I did. I took a really deep breath in and that's when I smelled gunpowder. Obviously being in law enforcement, you're on the range, you know what gunpowder smells like. And I was like, oh, she's shooting at me. This is kind of like me in like milliseconds thinking to myself. <laughs> so I was like, oh crap, like this girl. And that's when I could feel like the burning on this ear. You can't really see it, but that's where the burning started. So I was like, okay, she's shooting at me. Like get your bearings together. So I'm assuming with her like pushing and that first shot, like hitting me on the side of my ear um, was actually like the momentum with that pushed me to the ground. So I'm falling at the same time all of this is going on. So I hit the ground on my right side. So immediately I'm like, well, that's my gun side. So I got one or two choices to make, either roll left or roll right. My thought was if I roll left, I've already been shot on the left side and then my right arm will stay free. Well, that worked. However, as soon as I hit the ground, she was like standing over me, still shooting. So I just rolled, kicked my leg out because I was like, well, at this point, a leg injury is better than a head or my hand. So I stuck my head, uh, foot out 
And that's when I remember seeing like the bone in my foot, like shoot up when the bullet came through. So that was the part that really, really made me mad because out of all the other shots that I had gotten just laying on the ground, I really couldn't feel them. They kind of feel like little pinches. Like if somebody would just walk up to you and pinch, they don't really hurt immediately. It's just like a pinch. But the one that came through my foot, like I could feel like the bone like breaking in my foot and that just fired me up so bad. So that's when I was able to like pull out my gun on the right side. So I'm laying on my back, kind of like sitting up just a little bit. Um, I didn't want to sit all the way up because I didn't want to take a headshot, obviously, because she's still at this point angled down because I'm laying down. So I start shooting back at her. So then um, that's when she realizes what's going on. So she's kind of like trying to stand behind her car to get cover. I can't get up at this point because if I get up and do anything like she's got the upper hand. So I'm just like, I just got to lay here and shoot at this chick. So she finally fell behind the car. And that's when I was like, okay, this is my chance to get up. So I jumped up real quick. And then to my right is a big trash can. So like a little garbage, the, the cans that you would see outside of a normal store or whatever. So I was like, all right, that's some cover I can get to. Completely forgot about my car. <clears throat> so I just shoot across the parking lot real quick and jump behind the trash can. So as I'm shooting across the parking lot, I'm telling them, you know, shots fired on the radio. I get behind the trash can, do a mag change because I didn't know how many times I shot, didn't want to risk it. So I'm like behind the trash can. So I'm like either go right or left. So when I pop out left to try to see where she was is when I see that the car is moving that she's in. And me, I'm going, well, she told me the battery's dead. Like, how was the car back in play? Like to me and my thought, I was like, no, you told me the battery was dead. Like, get out of your car and like fight me. Like you already started this fight. Like, why are you running away from me? So she backed the car up and she drove around the opposite side of the store. So when she drove around the opposite side of the store, I was still closest to the side that I came in on. So I just ran around and I met her in the front of the parking lot. So she's driving across the parking lot. Here I am running. I lock eyes with her. It was like when I saw her, it was like she saw a ghost. Like she just knew I was dead and she was just standing there. So at first I was just going to like start shooting at the car across the parking lot. But I didn't feel comfortable doing that because, again, that's a high traffic foot area. They do open air drug markets like they just walk around. I didn't want to risk shooting somebody. So she drove off and then she made a right. Now, when she made that right to go where she was going, I knew for a fact that she was going back the direction that he said that they came from, which was from the mall. That would be the easiest route for her to get back to. So at this point, um, like the timing speeds back up like I got all my senses back I can hear I can smell I can taste and then that's when I like fell in the front of the parking lot and I didn't know why because I truthfully didn't know how many times I had been shot but I remember falling in the front of the parking lot I remember I threw up in the front of the parking lot and that's when I see blood everywhere and I was getting like to the point where I couldn't even hold myself up I was just disoriented obviously so I was trying to make a decision on so there's a gas station there's a circle k gas station at the front of this plaza and then there's my truck. So I'm in the middle. I'm like, can you make it to the truck or can you make it to the gas station? You got to pick one. So I was like, well, shit, if I go to my truck and I just die behind my truck, nobody's going to find me. But if I just go and collapse in front of a gas station parking lot, eventually somebody's going to walk outside, whether it be the clerk. So I start going towards the gas station. There's a green car that starts driving down the road that I was driving on before I turned into the parking lot. And the car stops. So I remember I walked up to the girl's passenger side window and I told her, I said, I need for you to call 911, say this number and say, all you got to do is say my call sign, which I told her at the time was 144. And she, I said, save this number, call them, say she's been shot. And that's all you got to say. Just give the location. And I remember I still had my gun in my hand because I'm like, I don't know if he's coming back. I don't know these threats. And then I realized when I looked up, that I had blood all over the side of her car. And she's like staring at me like a ghost. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and her hands are shaking. But I didn't realize what I looked like to her. It was like blood all over my uniform, all over my face. I got a gun in my hand. She's like just as freaked out as everybody else. So kind of like a couple of, it, it didn't seem that long. Maybe seconds after that is when my sergeant pulled up. That already told me to go home. So he gets there first. My partner that was already coming, all of them start flying in. 
I like lay on the ground and I handed my gun and I said, I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. I said, but y'all got it. I said, I'm hurt. <laughs> I don't know where I'm hit. I said, my stomach hurts. I remember I kept saying my stomach hurts, my stomach hurts. So they're like stripping me down, trying to figure out all these holes. And they're like, well, you're shot in your leg. You're shot in your face. You're shot in your foot. We can't find the one for your stomach. Well, the one for my stomach went under my vest. So I had the shot in the side. So that's where they couldn't find that one because they didn't take all of my clothes off. They were just doing the rake and they could just put the tourniquet on from what they saw. So my sergeant's there and he's like, who did it? Who did it? So I was like, oh, wait, I still had her ID in the front of my shirt. So I snatch it and I hand it to him. So all the guys were like staring at me. They was like, where'd you get the ID from? I said, she handed it to me. Like, <laughs> that's where it came from. It didn't just fall out of the air. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.